channel. It has been quite a while since I filmed my video and I'm actually going to get into the reason for that in today's video, which is my weeks 7 through 12 pregnancy update. And to be honest, it's taking everything I got to be sitting here and filming this for you guys. I'm exhausted. I am not feeling my best. But I just really, since I hadn't been able to film a pregnancy update for the last couple weeks, I really, really wanted to get this done. Since I've just about finished my first trimester, I kind of wanted to do, you know, a recap video of how the rest of my first trimester went um, to both share it with you guys and to have it for memory's sake for myself. Although, <laughs> the way these last couple weeks have gone, I'm not really sure I want to remember them all that well. But here we are. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm just kind of on the struggle bus recently, so this video might be a little bit of a hot mess, it might be a little jumbled and just not the most organized. I have a couple notes written down of the symptoms I've been experiencing the last couple weeks, but I just feel like I don't, I'm just not as prepared for this video as I normally am for my pregnancy updates. We might kind of be, you know, jumping back and forth throughout these last couple weeks rather than going in a nice chronological timeline. So yeah, sorry about that if it's a little confusing, but bear with me, I am doing the best I can. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the couple of ultrasounds that I've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, if you guys have been following my pregnancy journey, we um, used or we did an IUI to get pregnant and so we were being treated by our fertility center. Um, well, I guess I was being treated by uh, the fertility center for the first couple weeks of my pregnancy. Um, I forget exactly how far along I was when they um, discharged me, but basically they wanted me to come in for three ultrasounds with them and uh, once I successfully got through those, they discharged me and um, I am under the care of my midwife now. I actually have my very first midwife appointment tomorrow, which I am very excited about. Um, but yeah, so I had those three ultrasounds and I have all the pictures to share with you guys. I thought it'd just be kind of fun to, I don't know, show you guys what my ultrasound pictures looked like. Uh, I don't think there's any like personal information on here. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, so this first picture was taken at six weeks and one day and obviously that's where the little baby is. They actually labeled it on this picture because it's just a tiny little dot. <laughs> um, obviously six weeks is still very early in pregnancy. And then this one was taken at seven weeks and four days. And honestly, these weren't the best pictures. Um, I got some video of um, whenever the technician leaves the room, she kind of leaves a little loop up on the screen for us of um, of the you know ultrasound that she just did. And so you could kind of tell more what the baby looked like in those in these pictures. It just kind of looked like a bigger blob. Um, but if I remember correctly, I believe that's the head down at the bottom and then the back is kind of curving up like that with the um, feet, you know, up at the top. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the position the baby was in at that point. And at that ultrasound, the baby had a heart rate of 167. And so while obviously it's just an old wives tale, it's definitely in the girl range of, um, gender prediction based on the heart rate. And then um, the final ultrasound was taken at nine weeks exactly, and this one you could really start to tell that it was a baby, and we were also lucky enough to get a 4D ultrasound. And they didn't even warn us or anything. The ultrasound technician was just going through, you know, the regular ultrasound like normal, and then all of a sudden the screen flipped to 4D, and we were just like, oh my god! And it was just, I don't know, it was so, so cool seeing the 4D ultrasound. And yeah, like I said, we weren't expecting that at all, so that was a very exciting surprise, especially considering the really bad experience we had at our last third ultrasound to um, then have such, you know, I don't know, a fun little surprise added in this time. It was just really nice. Um, but yeah, so these are the ultrasounds from from nine weeks, what the baby was looking like. These two are the regular 2D ultrasound. The head is over here on the right, and I believe the spine is uh, curved down there with like the arms and feet up there. And then, oh wait, maybe I'm, no, I think this might be oriented differently, but either way, in the 4D um, ultrasound, the head is at the top, and then the little tiny body with the arm and leg nubs are down there. It just looks so cute. It's just, it was so crazy seeing it in 3D. I just really can't describe it. It was so cool. Um, and at that ultrasound, the heart rate was 175. So again, nice and solidly in that girl range. But who knows? I'm in lots of mom Facebook groups, and there have been, you know, posts about if the gender prediction was right or wrong for your baby based on the heart rate, and, you know, about 50% of the moms say, yeah, it was totally correct for 
through my baby at about 50% saying, no, it really wasn't. So <laughs> it's still a toss up, but those old wife gender predictions are just really fun nonetheless. And I actually do, my husband and I really want to film a gender prediction video for you guys, kind of going through all of the fun old wives tales, um, guessing the gender. And we're probably going to try and get that filmed pretty soon because we are doing the early, um, I think it's called the NITP. I'm pretty sure that's what the test is called. It's like the early gender, uh, or not gender, but um, genetic test that you can also find out the gender through. And we're getting that done tomorrow at our first appointment with the midwife. And so we will probably find out the gender in about a week, which I'm so excited about. I've just been so looking forward to that. I'm really, really excited. Um, but yeah, so you guys can probably expect that video, the uh, Old Wives Tales suit, because both of us really want to film it, so hopefully we can get our booties in gear and get that done for you. <laughs> so it's only a few minutes into this video, and I definitely ate a snack before filming this, hoping it would, you know, tide me over until I finished, and I'm already starving. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm always, always hungry. Um, but yeah, let's get into the actual symptoms of this past week. So, like I was saying before, it has been really, really, I just don't even know the right word to describe these last couple weeks. It's been really hard. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this. I started talking about this in my last pregnancy update, which was week six. So week seven is when it really hit me like a ton of bricks and I just fell flat on my butt. I could not do anything. I felt awful all day, every single day. I pretty much for the last five, however long it's been, weeks, um, I've been sitting on the couch watching YouTube and Netflix, not able to do a darn thing. <laughs> um, luckily, over the past week or two, the morning sickness aspect of things and some of the fatigue and exhaustion has lightened up, so I have been able to start slowly doing a couple things, you know, like one thing a day, for example, today, I'm filming for you guys. Um, but yeah, before that, I was just, I felt like death. It was just so awful. Um, luckily I didn't get sick too many times, although I definitely got sick a couple times. <laughs> I would say I want to average maybe once, maybe twice a week on average. Um, I actually would throw up, but that really mostly wasn't the issue. It was just kind of the extreme <sighs> nausea, but, um... So, I don't even know how to describe my feelings. It was just <laughs> such a cluster. Um, so I definitely had nausea, but that was mostly able to be taken care of by eating and kind of keeping my blood sugar up. Um, uh, my fertility center suggested at every single small meal that I should eat, you know, um, a protein and a sugar. And so I would try and eat things like um, grapes and cheese. That was a really good one. Um, I have peanut butter and jelly Uncrustables. Um, and I definitely was struggling to find things that I wanted to eat and could eat because some things would make me sick. Some things would um, give me horrible, like, I, I we think it's bloating. That's kind of our best guess what it is, but I would just get this horrible, painful, bloated feeling after eating certain foods. So for the first couple weeks, so like weeks seven through 10, maybe that's when those symptoms were absolutely horrendous. And I basically like, I, I felt like I just wasn't surviving. Like, I just felt like I was dying. It was so bad. I was just miserable all day on the couch. Sometimes I couldn't even watch, like, YouTube or Netflix. I just kind of had to lay there and be miserable. I was napping a whole lot. Um, I just, I, I felt awful. <laughs> and like I said, it was really, really hard to find foods that um, agreed with me. So... I would kind of, I found a couple staples that I would stick to, and every once in a while I would kind of have to shake it up and switch out one of my staples because either it would start making me sick or I just would, I developed an aversion to it. So there are a couple foods that have consistently done well for me over this entire like week seven through current. Um, and that is first thing in the morning, I have a bowl of Cheerios, and that's really nice. And then about an hour later, I have an Uncrustable. And honestly, it's kind of been killing me because most of the things that were causing a lot of like the bloating feelings were like healthy food. So I couldn't eat any fruits, I couldn't eat any vegetables, they just made me feel awful. Um, and before this, I was eating pretty healthy and so I just, my diet just took a nosedive. But um, everyone around me was saying, you know, just get the calories in, you can change your diet in the second trimester, just whatever you can get down, eat it and it's fine. Um, so that's kind of 
what I've been following over the last couple weeks. So yeah, another thing that's really worked for me is grapes. Grapes have been a really nice, and that's like the one really healthy snack that I was able to kind of consistently still eat, and they were just a really nice um, kind of, not bland, but just, I don't know, a really nice simple food to snack on. Um, in the beginning, I ate a lot of SpaghettiOs, and then I got sick of those. I ate a lot of butter noodles in the beginning, and then those started making me feel sick. Um, I did discover about halfway through um, these last couple weeks that I could eat potatoes, and so I started eating mashed potatoes, and then I started eating baked potatoes with um, sour cream. I use Greek yogurt as a sour cream substitute. It tastes exactly the same, but uh, with sour cream and cheese, and so that's been really good. Um, and then I've also had kind of like a standby carb snack that I've been um, munching on at any given time. So for a while I was really into saltines for those first couple of weeks. I was going through saltines like crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a reason every pregnant woman recommends them because when you feel like crud and nothing sounds good, saltines can always go down. So yeah, saltines worked really well for me, but then I just, I don't know, I got sick of them I guess and I just kind of got an aversion to them. I just like, they really didn't sound good anymore about like two, three weeks ago, I think. Um, anyways, uh, in that time I was also eating graham crackers overnight because that's another thing. I couldn't make it through the night without eating. Um, I would wake up feeling really nauseous because I hadn't eaten, uh, since I went to bed or whatever and I would need a snack. So I would keep a uh, thing of saltines and a little thing of graham crackers on my nightstand so that when I woke up in the middle of the night, I could, you know, chow down on some of that and go right back to sleep. So that was really helpful. Um, and then recently, over the last couple of weeks, pretty much since I stopped eating saltines, I started eating um, skinny pretzel sticks, and those have also been a really good um, kind of just plain carby snack to, you know, just kind of munch on throughout the day. Um, and yeah. Also, cup of noodles I've been eating a lot recently, which I really am not a fan of because it's super high in sodium, so I'm not super thrilled with myself for that. But again, I'm just kind of, you know, whatever I can eat at the moment. But recently I have been able to add back in some healthier options, which I'm, which I'm really excited about. Um, so like I said earlier, the kind of morning sickness and nausea has gone away almost like completely in the last week or two, uh, which has been great. So I feel a lot better. Um, I'm still pretty tired and I still definitely get the bloating and I get the bloating more now. Before it was kind of like, I, if I ate something and it made me bloated, I would just not eat that food and I could be fine. And so as long as I, you know, I would just have to test out new foods and see how, you know, I reacted and then go from there. Now it's kind of, a um, everything makes me bloated. <laughs> So there's no real avoiding it. There is avoiding making it really bad. So I've just, again, just been trying to, you know, do the best I can. But, um, yeah, I've been able to add back in, like, boiled carrots, um, some celery, peanut butter, which has been a good snack. Uh, what else have I been able to eat? Ooh, chicken. And that's another thing. I have had a complete aversion to meat my entire pregnancy, except once I had a craving for a roast beef sandwich, which I did have, and then it, gave, it made me so bloated. Oh, my God, it hurt my stomach so bad. But um, yeah, I have been able to eat a little bit of chicken recently. Um, my husband got me a rotisserie chicken, which I've been slowly going through. Um, and yeah, that's probably enough about my diet and what I've been eating though. You guys are probably like, we really don't care what you've been eating. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. But I feel like basically food and what I can and cannot eat has been my entire life the past five weeks. So to me, what I'm eating is like super important, but um, Anyways, let's move on to another symptom. <laughs> but yeah, so to sum all of that up, I just kind of ceased to exist <laughs> over the last five weeks. Um, yeah, I wasn't even able to shower. That's how bad I felt. Like I was probably showering once a week. It was just so brutal. I had no energy. I had no ability to do anything. And I just want to say, bless my husband, because he has been incredible. He has completely taken over all of the household responsibilities, which I normally handle because he works full time. So he's been, you know, going to work, working a full day, coming home, you know, cooking himself dinner, doing all the dishes, doing the laundry, fetching me food and water and snacks every you know, 20 minutes as I need it. Um, and he has just been an absolute lifesaver. I don't know how I would have gotten through the last couple of weeks without him. Um, yeah, so, Miles, I love you and you're a saint. <laughs> Alright, so I've still had a stuffy nose. Um, 
it's kind of ebbed and flowed. I don't think now, of course, as soon as I start talking about it, I'm gonna sound super nasally, but I actually haven't been over the last five weeks. Like normally I have been able to sound completely fine. It hasn't been bad enough to where, you know, I sound nasally, but I've definitely still been stuffy and runny, um, constantly like blowing my nose. And I think it's just something I'm gonna have to deal with my entire pregnancy. It has gotten a little easier to deal with. It was more of a super annoyance early on in the pregnancy. So I am glad that it kind of leveled out to where it's not like, I don't know, just so in my face annoying. It's just kind of like, yeah, my nose is stuffy, what's new? <laughs> Another thing that happened, so this has also kind of gone away in the last couple of weeks since my morning sickness has gone away, but this was a symptom that I wasn't really expecting and it was kind of really difficult. So with the nausea and the just ickiness feeling and just feeling like absolute crud, it was really hard to kind of read my body and like, know exactly what I was feeling because sometimes like I would eat you know an entire meal for me which you know obviously was a very small meal because when you're early pregnant like they tell you to eat you know small meals every two hours instead of three meals a day but anyways after eating I would definitely if I, even if I was starving I wouldn't feel like I ate and I would still feel hungry and I would feel like my stomach needed to growl and I would you know give it time and even like 20 minutes after eating when I should be feeling that full feeling I wouldn't feel it and I would feel like I needed to eat more and so I would eat more but that would make me sick because I really didn't need to eat more it was just really hard to interpret what my body was feeling um, so kind of at any given time, I had no idea if I was hungry, if I was full, if I was feeling nauseous, if I was like, it was just so hard to read. Um, so that's what kind of made it really difficult was because it wasn't just like, oh, I'm hungry. Let's go eat. That'll fix that. It was just like, oh my God, I feel awful. What the heck is wrong? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Another thing that has been a super pain is I have definitely been having pregnancy insomnia and it has been really hard to get just a full regular night's sleep. So like I was saying, in the first, um, just from maybe, you know, weeks 7 to 10 or something like that, uh, I would wake up throughout the night and need to eat, and so that would kind of sometimes wake me up is that I'm, like, really hungry. Also, uh, HCG makes you have to pee a lot. I think it's, like, something has to, it has to do with, like, cleaning out your kidneys or something like that. But, so I would wake up needing to, you know, go to the bathroom a lot in the middle of the night, and I would also just wake up for no reason and just be awake for two hours. Even though I felt exhausted, I would just be awake for two hours for no reason. <laughs> and sometimes I, you know, could be super tired when I went to bed, I would be able to fall asleep and it just like, I have no idea. I would just get horrible night's sleep. That is definitely still going on. Luckily, I am kind of getting out of the really needing to eat in the middle of the night because that has started to make me get that painful bloating feeling. So I feel like I just keep switching, you know, out these symptoms. Um, one goes away, I get another uncomfortable one, but that's pregnancy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not eating in the middle of the night so much anymore because it's started to make me wake up feeling bloated, which really sucks because before, I would be able to, you know, I would eat something that wouldn't agree with me, it would make me feel, you know, bloated and painful for the night, and then I would go to bed and the next morning it'd be gone. But that, that's a thing of the past. But anyways, the sleep. <laughs> I've just been getting really bad sleep. Uh, that's still going on, but not as bad. But yeah, I definitely will still wake up multiple times throughout the night. Sometimes there's a reason, sometimes there's not. Sometimes I can go back to sleep, sometimes I can't. It's a toss up. <laughs> Very early on in this, uh, you know, update weekly time frame, um, around the seven to eight, maybe nine week marks. Um, I was really sensitive to light and sound and it's just kind of what I was feeling at my peak yucky. <laughs> um, it just light and sound was really, I don't know, bothersome to me. It really hurt my head more so light than sound. But if I was feeling really cruddy, I wouldn't be able to hear, you know, like loud TV, like I'd have to turn the volume down. Um, and light definitely bothered me for a good long time. Like even if it was like a bright sunny day outside, like I couldn't look out the window because it just like hurt my head, hurt my eyes. Uh, when I was going to bed at night, like I just, I, I feel most awful kind of at night because I've just gone through a whole day of trying to make my body happy. And at the end of the day, it's just like, I'm done. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, there's like no better feeling than turning the lights out at the end of the night. That's still very satisfying to me because it's just like, 
so relaxing, but the sensitivity has definitely gone away um, since I've started to feel better, so that doesn't bother me anymore, which is really nice because that was definitely not fun. All right, let's see what else. Um, I've been breaking out, I've kind of, I kind of go through cycles, so for a while my skin will be completely fine and not an issue, and then I'll go through, you know, a week or so where I have a really bad breakout. Recently I've been breaking out really bad on my chin, um, and I haven't done any skincare in like over a month, like in a long time, definitely. I mean, I want to say since like weeks, I don't know, whenever I started feeling like crud, so probably around week six or something like that. Because I just, I just do not have it in me. The only things I can get myself to do at night is take my medicine, uh, take out my contacts, and brush my teeth. Anything other than that is not going to happen. So, yeah, I haven't been washing my face at all. My skin has just been definitely not at its best, so I'm looking forward to feeling better and actually being able to take care of my skin again. But, yeah, I still think the breakouts are hormone-related and not the fact that I haven't been taking care of my skin. Because some of the times it's, like, completely fine. Uh, I did have to switch to gummy prenatal vitamins, um, so, oh, and I also had to take, stop taking a couple of my daily vitamins, um, so, so, alright, so the prenatal, so for a while, I started taking the, um, Rainbow Light Prenatal 1, I really like that vitamin, you only have to take one of them, uh, it doesn't have too awful of a taste, and it's just, I don't know, I really like that prenatal, but when I just started feeling so super sick, I just completely stopped being able to take of any big pills so you know there was like you know a night or two where I just like I couldn't do it and so I didn't take my prenatal and I was like okay this can't continue <laughs> and so um we got me some gummy prenatals so that you know even when I couldn't take that huge pill I still can just you know take some gummies and get you know even though they're not as good as the pills it's better than not taking anything at all so I got the shoot what are they called I completely forget what they're called. I'll try and remember to link them in the description below, but um, they were the best recommended prenatal gummies that I could find. And I mean, they're, you know, they're pretty good. They're not bad, but they're definitely, um, you're supposed to like thoroughly chew them before swallowing and then you can kind of, once you've chewed it for a while, you can kind of taste that you're just like chewing a bunch of vitamins and it's not like a normal gummy. It's a, you know, vitamin gummy, but yeah, it's not bad. And I've had no problem with taking them since I got them. Um, but now that I am feeling better, I am planning on switching back to the Rainbow Light Prenatal 1 or the second trimester Rainbow Light uh, Prenatals. I have both and I just kind of want to see which ones I like better. Alright, I think that is all of my physical symptoms. Um, I did kind of quickly want to touch on how I've been doing, I guess, like, emotionally <laughs> over the last couple weeks. So, um, you guys know this is my second pregnancy. I had a pregnancy last fall that ended in a missed miscarriage. I did a whole video explaining my um, experience with that, and I'll link it in the cards or below or somewhere if you're interested in watching that. Um, and I, at the beginning of this pregnancy, I was determined to not let that experience kind of color my um, outlook on this pregnancy. and. I mean, I knew obviously that it would a little bit, but I was, you know, just trying really hard to just, okay, just because I had one experience or one bad experience doesn't necessarily mean it's going to, you know, go bad again. So I think I did really good with that the first couple of weeks, but then I definitely started getting, you know, more and more nervous and uncomfortable uh, the farther along I got because it, the closer to um, the point in my last pregnancy where things went wrong. So, for example, approaching that third ultrasound with this pregnancy was really nerve-wracking for me because that's the, um, time in my last pregnancy where I was told that it wasn't going to last. Um, luckily we got nothing but good news in our third ultrasound, but I have still been nervous because this third ultrasound was scheduled four days earlier in my pregnancy than the last ultrasound and so since i haven't gotten checked since then it's just kind of i don't know been really hard for me um to not worry i guess um but the fact that i have been continually feeling awful <laughs> over these last couple weeks is kind of the only thing that's made me feel better because last time after um even though i didn't miscarry right away after the uh, pregnancy was no longer viable, I did, my pregnancy symptoms stopped and I started feeling like completely better almost right away. So the fact that I still have these pregnancy symptoms and I'm still feeling bad 
is kind of, you know, I feel I'm taking it as a good sign, obviously. Um, and yeah, that's definitely given me hope. Um, but another thing I've been experiencing, and I'm sure other women that have gone through um, miscarriages can relate, is that I've just been having a little bit harder of a time, I guess, connecting and investing in this pregnancy and having it really click in my mind that this pregnancy is going to stick and stay and I'll end up with a baby. Um, and I, I've talked about it with my husband as well, and it's just kind of we feel the same way because our only experience right now of pregnancy is it ending. And so it's just kind of hard to really wrap our minds around it yet at this point that, you know, this is really happening this time and that we are having a baby. And we both think that now that we're pretty much, I think at the end of this week, so when I'm 13 weeks, uh, at the end of my 13th week, I will be out of my first trimester. So, but I'm kind of considering like my first trimester over now. I know it's like kind of debatable between 12 and 13 weeks. So I think the fact that I made it this far is definitely obviously a really good sign. And um, tomorrow when I go to my midwife appointment, I think that's gonna what, I think that is what's gonna really be able to kind of um, turn that switch in my head that like this is really happening and it's okay to kind of, you know, start investing emotionally in this pregnancy um, and, you know, believing that the baby is, you know, happy and healthy in there and uh, going to keep growing. So that's kind of the, um, what I've just been, you know, telling myself whenever I feel, you know, scared or nervous or anxious just to get through to the midwife appointment and, um, you know, hopefully all of my fears will be eased. So yeah, I am very excited for my appointment tomorrow for so many reasons. Um, I can't wait to see the baby on an ultrasound because it's really gonna look like a baby now so I'm really excited about that as well um but yeah I'm also just really excited to kind of be out of the scary first trimester because I feel like you know the first trimester can be scary for any, any pregnant woman since you know the risk of things going wrong or miscarriage is so high in the first trimester but um especially someone who has experienced miscarriage before um yeah I'm just excited to be out of the first trimester and have it behind me. <laughs> oh, so I forgot to do this in the beginning, um, but normally I share with you guys um, what the baby looks like in my app Pregnancy Plus. It can actually show you um, a life-sized image of the uh, fetus and you know where it's at in the development. So yeah, this is what we are looking like today at 12 weeks. It's just crazy to me how big it is. I keep like um, putting it on my screen and then kind of putting my phone right on my belly where the baby would be to kind of imagine a baby of that size inside my uterus and it's just, it's bananas to me. It's crazy. <laughs> um, Alright, so let's see what it's saying for this week. Your baby now has the ability to open and close its fists and to make sucking movements. All the organs are developing into their final shapes including the stomach, liver, pancreas, and intestines. And your baby's lungs are practicing breathing with amniotic fluid. The lungs won't breathe oxygen until birth. So that's really exciting stuff. And then as far as size comparisons, baby is the size of a kiwi, a baby chick, which is adorable, and a cupcake. <laughs> so that's super fun. I like just seeing those every week. Um, yeah, it's just a fun way to kind of see the progression of the growth. All right, so now we can get into the measurements. Um, as far as my weight goes, I did overall lose, I think about five pounds uh, over the last couple of weeks. The last recorded uh, or last shared weight that I shared with you was uh, my week six update and that was 123.2. And then this morning I was 119.2. And the lowest that I've gotten was actually yesterday, I was 118.2. And um, besides that weight yesterday, I've been pretty um, consistent at 119.2, like exactly over the last two weeks at least, maybe even three weeks. But um, yeah, so I think that's just the fact that I wasn't able to eat a whole lot. And you know, even when I was able to eat, I wasn't able to eat, you know, things with lots of protein and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I've lost uh, a total of 4.4 pounds since the beginning of my pregnancy. But honestly, I wasn't ever too concerned about the weight that I was losing because um, I think, like I said in my first pregnancy update, I had gained 
weight from what I would consider my normal healthy range, which I would say is 110 to 115. And then between um, my last pregnancy and then kind of since then, I got up to 123. And so the fact that I feel like I had a little bit extra weight that I was carrying that it was okay to lose without ever having to start worrying because even at my lowest point, I was never at, um, I had never even hit my like normal healthy range. So I wasn't too concerned with losing the weight. Obviously if I had lost much more than that, I would have, you know, I don't know what I would have done. I would have asked the doctor what to do, but yeah, I never really got too concerned about that. But let's get into the bump shot. So here is what the bump looks like at 12 weeks uh, with obviously my shirt on. It's definitely popping out there a little bit. I don't want to say it's 100% baby bump because I feel like some of it might be bloat. I, I just honestly I can't tell. I don't really know what's baby bump and what's not. Um, I don't feel super bloated right now. When I'm bloated, oh my gosh, I can get like, <laughs> my belly is huge and I look so pregnant. But uh, right now I'm not, so I don't know if this is really, I don't know what I look like. I've been trying to check out my bump like first thing in the morning and you know, see if it you know looks like anything then and it definitely still does so I don't know but I feel like it's so early to actually start showing like I'm only 12 weeks I'm, are you supposed to show this early I don't know but regardless this is what I look like at 12 weeks and now let's see what it looks like with the shirt up so yeah there's the little baby bump Ooh. Sorry, I'm a little unsteady. I'm standing on like a pile of books so that you can actually get a full shot of the belly. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Another 12 week bump. <laughs> oh, and let's see what we are measuring at this week. All right, so looks like we are right at 32. Okay, so. I think I actually did lose some, let's see. Yeah, last time I measured I was 33 and a half. So I lost an inch and a half um, since week six. But I feel like I look bigger than that. I'm honestly really surprised that I lost inches. Um, so yeah, I don't know, there you have it, 32. <laughs> All right, and that finishes up my weeks seven through 12 bump date. I am going to try and start doing these more frequently again now that I am feeling much better. Um, I still haven't decided if I'm going to do them weekly or every other week. I'm kind of leaning towards every other week at the moment um, unless a whole bunch of things happen in a week and I feel like I could get a whole update video out of it. But um, yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards every other week. I just feel like that would I don't know, work better. but. Um, yeah, also, for those of you who are vlog followers of mine, I kind of wanted to give a quick update on here. I have been trying to keep in touch on the community tab over there as much as I can, but I, like I said, I've just been <laughs> not capable of doing much recently. But I am hoping to start vlogging again soon as well. I have two vlogs that I still need to edit and get up for you guys. I haven't even been, I have like my first ultrasound, um, visit. I have that day vlogged and then I have another update vlog I did a couple weeks after that but I just have not, I just wasn't able to edit and get them up. Um, but yeah, I want to get those up for you guys very soon and then I think Miles and I agreed that we are going to start vlogging tomorrow because um, we really want to get our first midwife appointment vlogged. I mean I don't know if we're going to vlog there but we definitely want to at least like talk about it and share you know what happened and stuff like that. Um, on that day. So we will be vlogging tomorrow. Um, and going forward from that, what I'm planning is if I can't, um, if I can't daily vlog regularly, like film and edit every single day, I might kind of start switching to a weekly vlogging format for the time being until I can get back to daily vlogging. Um, and just kind of, you know, first of all, because I'm not, I'm not doing much, like, at all. So just kind of, you know, whenever I do do something um, or I want to give you guys an update, picking up the camera and filming a clip um, here and there throughout a week and then throwing them together uh, for a weekly vlog like that. Um, so let me know if that would be something you're interested in if I'm not able to right away daily vlog. But, um, yeah, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really trying guys and it has been killing me not able to upload to YouTube since I've been sick and 
I'm really looking forward. I just, I have such, I'm like itching to get back into it and to be able to do stuff again. I've also been getting all your sweet comments asking how I've been doing and I've been trying to respond to your like DMs on Instagram, for example, as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to give you guys a really quick update. I am so aware that I have just disappeared and I feel horribly about it, but honestly, I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so hoping to get back to regular as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's been so long since I've filmed a video that I don't want to stop rambling. I kind of wanted to just keep chatting to you guys, but I don't think I have anything else to say, so I'm going to wrap things up. I hope you guys enjoyed this update, and give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already, and uh, leave me any questions you have related to my pregnancy in the comments below, and I can answer them in my next pregnancy update. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!